Hi, this is Erika Kasab from Small Robot Studio with a quick tutorial on Nomad Sculpt, a 3D sculpting app for tablet users. In this first series, we'll take a look at the sculpting tools, learning how to customize them to get the most out of them. Today, we are reviewing Crease and Pinch. Let's start with Crease. This tool is great for creating cuts, dents or wrinkles. By default, it's gonna carve down, but we can change it with this side button. The main difference between brush or clay is that crease pulls the vertices together like a magnet. In other words, it pinches the mesh. This behavior will help us get sharper brush strokes. The strength of the pinch can be controlled by tapping on the tool setting and changing the slider. By turning on the wireframe, you can see the difference. If you put it all the way down to zero, it will behave very similar to a brush or clay with a sharp fall off. Still, I've found that crease gives you sharper results regardless. Hey, make sure that you are subscribed with notifications on, otherwise you might be missing out on the many tutorials that we release for free each week here on YouTube. Speaking about fall off, let's go into the stroke menu and understand how it works. All the brushes can be set to their own falloff, but the best way to illustrate it is with crease. Falloff is a curve that will define the intensity within the brush diameter. Imagine we take the circumference of a brush and place it flat. Where the curve is higher, there will be more deformation. The bottom area decreases deformation. Tap on the curve and you can choose from many presets or make your own on the custom section. Let me make a stroke with different falloffs now I'll make a cut between them, so you can appreciate how the silhouette changed between each of them. As you can see here, there are situations in which we will see the spacing of the brush. We can also modify this in the same stroke menu, going a bit lower to stroke spacing. A lower value might give us better result, but it will affect the performance of the software. Tracing lines slowly will also help. Take advantage of these settings to modify your tool to serve your objectives better. For example, let's make something like eyebrow hair. I'll bring down the pinch force, then create a falloff with a sharp point, and to have some intensity fade in and out, I'll change the pressure curve to this shape. We are ready to sculpt. These changes make the result nicer than just using the default settings. Maybe you need to carve a long line, but you encounter two problems. It's hard to control the line and make it clean. We can try making it bit by bit, but the connection points are very noticeable. Let's customize our brush to make this work. Open again the stroke menu and scroll down to stroke. Dragging distance will give the stroke a bit of a lag, like a lazy mouse, allowing you to go slower and more precise. Stroke smoothing is a line stabilizer. It makes an average of the pointer position, so instead of giving me a jagged result, it's a nice fluid line. The first problem is solved. We have a nice clean line, but I still have the issue of the connections not matching. For this, I will use snap radius. It creates an area around the end of your last brush stroke. If you start a new stroke in this area, it will snap it into the last recorded point. This will fix the position, but not the intensity of your stroke. So if the pressure you apply changes, which is most likely, the connection might still be visible. What I like to do is to turn off pressure for radius and intensity to keep the line the same. And voila, the connection is much better now. These settings are available for most brushes. So you might be thinking, what's the difference between crease and pinch? Crease does two operation. It builds volume up or down and pinches the mesh. Pinch only works as a magnet for vertices. Technically, it won't affect the shape of the geometry, unless the radius is big and the intensity is quite high. Pinch is great for sharpening corners. When we reverse its action, it repels vertices, so you can use it to round corners. I've often found that the effect of pinch is way too subtle, so I like to crank it up in the intensity multiplier inside the stroke menu. By the way, up to January 2021, these settings cannot be saved, so they will be set to default once you close and open Nomad again. Alright, that's all we need to know for now. Stay tuned for more videos of the other tools. Happy sculpting! 
That's it for this tutorial. If you find it useful, make sure that you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we are bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking in the link below.